Welcome. This is my video for the uh, 2017 uh, AP Calculus AB exam, the free response questions. Question number one, and this is a graphing calculator question. We're given a table right here, and then it says a tank has a height of 10 feet. The area of the horizontal cross section of the tank at height h is given by the function a, where a of h is measured in square feet. Function a is continuous and decreases as h increases. Selected values for function a of h are given in the table above. Now, here's what I noticed just looking at that data real quick. is like, notice the data is always decreasing, and the interval width is not constant. Okay, so if you figure the slope, that's, uh, you know, 30-something divided by 3. That average to be about 12. This is about 8 divided by 3. That's going to be a little bit more than 2. And this guy is here like 3.5 divided by 5. That's less than 1. So the, it's always decreasing. And the derivative is always positive, okay, but it is getting um, smaller each time. And that means that the concavity, the second derivative, is uh, greater than zero. It's concave up. So here's just a quick sketch. So, you know, 0, 50.3, 2 is 14.4, 5, comma, 6.5, 10, comma, 2.9. So you see concave up. So the function is always decreasing and has the second derivative is always positive over the interval from 0 to 10. Okay, on to the first question, part A. <clears throat> Use a left Riemann sum with the three subintervals indicated by the date in the table to approximate the volume of the tank, indicate the units of measure. So, here we go. Let me gra grab a color. Actually, I'm going to set up a bunch of colors here. I'm going to grab the blue, make sure my marker's thin, and go, here's the deal. So, for the uh, left Riemann sum, so we have an interval here like that, and then we're going to have an interval like this, and then we're going to have the last interval is going to go there. So we're always going to take the left-hand value, and since the function is always decreasing, the left-hand value is going to be the greater value of the left-hand and the right-hand for each interval. So here we go. We take the interval width, which in the first interval is 2. We multiply it times the left-hand value, which is 50.3. The second interval, the width is 3 units. We multiply that by the left-hand value, which is 14.4. And then the third interval is from 5 to 10 is 5 units for the interval width, multiplied by the left-hand value 6.5. We do all that multiplying, add them up, we get 176.3 cubic feet. So notice h is in feet, area is in square feet, so when we multiply those, this is feet times square feet, so the units are cubic feet, or you could say feet cubed. There we go. And notice on the AP Calculus exam, the way they score the points, I'll have that here in a second, is usually you need to write down the equation, whatever the equation is that you're doing. So here, just writing out uh, what that is. Uh, you know, that 2 times the 50.3 and the 3 times the 14.4, and then the 5 times the 6.5, that would be the same as writing down the equation, essentially. And then you get the... Uh, one point for the left Riemann sum, and then one point for the approximation. So one point for writing down the values like that, and one point for having the correct calculation. There's two points. Boom. On to the next uh, part, part B. Does the approximation in part A overestimate or underestimate the volume in the tank? Explain your reasoning. Okay. So here's the deal. We have this decreasing function, like I did the graph on the, on the overview page. And so we do the left Riemann sum. So for the left-hand value, that's the height of my function. And that's true for all three subintervals. And so notice this part right here, that's clearly because the graph is concave up and we're doing a left-hand Riemann sum on a, a strictly decreasing function, that means the Riemann sum has to overestimate. Okay? Because the left Riemann sum always uses the greater uh, value of the two function values. It uses the left-hand, which in a decreasing function, equates to being the greater one. That's why it's going to be an overestimate. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? Kind of digging that. Big fan of easy questions. Okay, part C, the area in square feet of the horizontal cross section. Let me probably kind of put these up here. So the area in square feet of the horizontal cross section, h feet, is modeled by the function f given below. Here's function f. And based on this model, find the volume of the tank, indicate units of measure. So, again, uh, F is uh, uh, 
feet squared and h is uh, feet so the volume here is going to be the area times the height so basically this is going to be the integral volume is going to equal the integral of f, a, f of h dh okay and then we're going to integrate from 0 to 10 so we take this function right here we put that in our calculator so 50.3 divided by e to the 0 0.2 h power plus h so using a Texas Instruments TI-83+, plus, so you can see I did math 9, so that's the integrate function, function integrate, uh, 50.3 divided by, then you have to have parentheses, of course, e to the 0.2x, and then plus x, then I have to close off that parentheses, and then the rest of the command, the parameters here is with respect to x, and then the limits of integration, the lower limit is 0, the upper limit is 10. And you hit enter, and it calculates a value of 101.325. So there we go. The volume is 101.325 cubic feet. And it says indicate units of measure, so it's important to say, yes, that is cubic feet. On to part D. Okay. So water is pumped into the tank. When the height of the water is 5 feet, the height is increasing at the rate of 0.26 feet per minute. So here, when h is equal to 5, the height is increasing at 0.26 feet per minute. So that's going to be the change in height with respect to time. So that's dh dt is the 0 0.26 feet per minute. Using the model from part C, so that's the last one we did with the equation for F, find the rate at which the volume of water is changing with respect to time when the height of the water is 5 feet, indicate the units of measure again. Okay, so we know volume is equal to the integral of F of X dx, F being, boom, there's our definition for F right there, 50.3 divided by E to the 0.2H power plus H. So the integral from 0 to h of f of x dx, that's going to be the volume at h height based on h changing, right? So here we go. Now we do the, uh, inter or the derivative of that. So the derivative of this guy is going to be dv dt. And so we're going to find the derivative volume with respect to time. And then we're going to do the, cha the chain rule. So the derivative of volume with respect to height times the change in height with respect to time. And so, basically, dv dh, that's going to be f of 5. So the, the derivative of an integral is this guy right here. So we're going to make h5. So the derivative of f of x from 0 to 5 is going to be f of 5. And then dh dt, dh dt is 0.26. Boom. So I'm just going to put that in the calculator. So we have our function right here. I put 5 in. So 50.3 divided by e to the 0 0.2 times 5 power, right? And then plus 5. We get a calculation for that, and that ends up being 6.517. And then we take that guy and multiply it times 0 0.6. So one-fifth of that's going to be like around 1.5. And, and we do the calculation in the calculator. And to the nearest thousandth, we get 1.694. And this is cubic feet per minute. Okay. So this was feet per minute here. And then um, we multiply it times the square feet. So that gives us feet per minute times square feet. It's going to be feet cubed per minute. So cubic feet, that's the same as feet squared per minute. And the way the point breaks down here is this definition of dv dt. That's worth two points on this problem, and then the actual answer, 1.694, is worth um, another point. And it says indicate units of measure, so if you leave the units off, I suspect you wouldn't get the point. Okay, that completes question number one. You know, all these questions, roughly you get a 15-minute uh, time limit on average per free response question. That took in the neighborhood of 10 minutes. Okay, not too shabby. Okay, that's the end of this video. 
And if you want to see the other problems, you have to click on those links for those videos. Ciao, baby.